Before we can start talking about relativity, we need to say a little bit more about reference frames. So recall that a reference frame is basically um, a grid, a coordinate system, where we choose a zero point here. This would be maybe for Anastasia and uh, a zero point in time as well. And then once we do that, we can measure events in space time um, according to this reference frame. And you can have reference frames with different locations, and you could even have reference frames that are moving around as well. So a reference frame could be attached to any sort of object. So, so far I've talked about stationary reference frames and reference frames that move at a constant speed. But in theory, at least, a reference frame could be moved to, could be attached to all sorts of things. It could be, you could have a rotating reference frame. You could have a reference frame that accelerates. You could have a reference frame that's in free fall. All of those would still be reference frames. In relativity, though, we're interested not just in any reference frame, but a particular type of reference frame in which Newton's first law is true. So Newton's first law, often called the law of inertia, is as follows. It says that objects at rest stay at rest, and objects in motion stay in motion with a constant velocity, unless acted on by an external force. So let's think about how that might play out in terms of reference frames. So suppose we have a ball and a reference frame. Here's Beowulf, recovered pretty well from his calamitous fall moments ago. And uh, the ball's at rest, Beowulf is at rest, and Beowulf would say, okay, this ball is at rest, and it's staying at rest. That sounds like the first law, um, Newton's first law. Okay, so now let's say we have another reference frame. Here's Anastasia. And Anastasia is going to be moving at a constant velocity like this. And so to her, this ball, which was stationary to Beowulf, is moving at a constant speed. But it's going to keep moving at a constant speed. So Anastasia would also say that Newton's first law is true, is holding in her reference frame. Uh, an object is moving at a constant speed, and it continues to move at a constant speed. So the picture here is that this ball is just floating in space somewhere or something. Okay, so one more example. Let's say Anastasia is accelerating, going slowly and then quickly and quickly. So then what she would report, what she's seeing in this ball, is that it's coming at her with a um, slow speed and then it's coming at her faster and faster. And that's a violation of Newton's law. We have this isolated object with no force on it, and it's not staying in mo motion with the same velocity. Its velocity is changing. So we would say that last example, where Anastasia is accelerating, would not be a reference frame in which Newton's first law holds. So if we're in a frame where Newton's first law does hold, we call that an inertial reference frame. So that's another technical term. An inertial reference frame is a reference frame in which Newton's first law holds. In practice, a, an inertial reference frame is one that's moving at a constant speed. So any, uh, any frame moving at a constant speed would be, or I should say, a constant velocity. So that it's, its direction isn't changing either. Any frame moving at a constant velocity is an inertial reference frame. Now that we've defined inertial reference frame, we can state the final version of the principle of relativity, which is, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. And we'll use that principle to start exploring Einstein's relativity in subsequent units. Let me say a few more things about inertial reference frames to maybe give a little bit of intuition about that. So um, laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. Maybe one way to think about that is all inertial reference frames feel the same. Okay, so right now I'm at rest with respect to the, my floor, and I know what that feels like. I, I'm just here at rest. I could also uh, be on a train that's moving at a constant velocity along nice smooth 
tracks at 50 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, 150 kilometers an hour. And that would feel exactly the same. I would feel just like I was standing here or just like I was sitting over there in my office chair. If I'm in a non-inertial frame, if I'm accelerating, I'm speeding up, or maybe I'm we're going around a turn, I can feel that and that feels different. But in all inertial reference frames feel the same. I can't tell if I'm going at 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers. I'll have to, I could tell if I looked out the window, but if I was in a train with no windows, I couldn't do an experiment inside that train that would tell me how fast I was going. 